From Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors, Red Hat and Cisco. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Uh, happy to have on uh, one of the keynote speakers uh, fr from the sessions here at the summit. It's Chris Emmons, who's the Director of Network Infrastructure Planning uh, with Verizon. Thanks for joining us. Hi. And uh, part of the solution that you've deployed uh, is with Big Switch, and we have Kyle Forrester, who's the founder of Big Switch, uh, on the program. Kyle, thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. Mm, thanks, Stu. All right, guys, so, so first of all, uh, yeah, Chris, I mean, Give us some of the highlights, the, the, the keynote, you know, what brought you to OpenStack uh, and uh, you know, what, 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 what you're doing in your solution. Sure, so uh, you know, we wanted to come discuss what Verizon's been doing uh, for the past you know, couple years, but the last uh, 18 months in general. Um, deploying a large scale NFV infrastructure for our next generation network. And uh, we coupled that with a press release on Monday morning that's you know, out there for everybody to see. So we're pretty excited. We're, we're, we're hurtling down the NFV track now and OpenStack's key to that as is um, Big Switch and, and Dell, our other partners, and Red Hat uh, from, an, from an OpenStack perspective. All right, great. Maybe step back a second. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about you know, your role, what you do at Verizon. Sure. Verizon's a big company. You know, it's a, there's telco, there's cloud aspects, of course mobile, you know, everything else. I, you know, I get my monthly bill for a variety of services that I use. <laughs> so uh, you know, what, 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 what's your piece of the puzzle? Sure, so I work in our uh, corporate technology group, so doing uh, planning. Um, I'm responsible for the architecture and deployment plans for the cloud for the network side of our business. So the, uh, the cloud that we're going to use to, to virtualize our infrastructure. So not a, not a public facing cloud, but, a, but an infrastructure private cloud. So, uh, you know, like I said, we've been, we've been heads down just executing here the last uh, couple years and, and we came out here to, to kind of show the world what we've been doing and, and uh, you know, spread the word about some of the good work we've done and, and, and the collaboration with our partners. All right, great. Hey, so Kyle, you know, we, we, we've been talking since, you know, Big Big Switch, you know, came into creation. Uh, big buzzword, you know, acronym, I guess I would say, is NFV. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started talking to Big Switch, I mean, it was all about SDN. So maybe you could help to code for our audience a little bit, uh, you know, that, that SDN, NFV distinction, uh, Big Switch's role, sure. and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll follow up some discussion of the Verizon use case. Sure. The, uh, you know, think of, NFE workloads that are running in a, you know, in, in a modern data center stress the network in ways like you wouldn't believe, right? It's not only throughput, but it's a series of you know, optimizations that are required for different parts of the operational life cycle and the, just the intense complexity of the network topology that they require underneath. You know, to take a really simple example, let's say you have two VNFs and a router in, router out, just to get 10 gigs of throughput for an NFE system, you need 60 gigs of routing capacity. And you need that routing capacity to show up in the right place at the right time. There's no way that you can do this with traditional L2, L3 networks. So while people say SDN and NFE, you know, they're independent as technologies, but NFE really requires, it pushes the network so hard that it requires you to think very differently than traditional L2, L3 designs will let you. I think one thing that we're extremely proud of, you know, look, the work under Chris's leadership and under his team, you know, took a set of technologies, you know, last year that were not specific to NFV, right? Last year there really was nothing out there. There was NSV specific on the routing switching side. Uh, and in their build, in, in nine months, really went from, what, from first conversation to, to full production, right? Mm -hmm. 50 racks in, in production network. Yep. I mean, that's a land speed record, right? That's a land speed record, I think, in the telco community. That's a land speed record in the NFV community, right? That's a land speed record in the large-scale OpenStack community. Uh, and these guys delivered it. So the, the technical accomplishment that they did here is really something else. Yeah, so, so Chris, I mean, this is not some solution that was pre-packaged, press a button, it, it drops in and everything there. You had a, a number of partners that you worked with on this. Can, can you walk us through a little bit about you know, how you kind of spec'd it out, you know, how you chose the partners that are involved, and uh, maybe help us walk the stack a little bit about you know, what, what makes up that solution? Sure, so, so 
if we rewind even a little bit further, you know, Kyle mentioned the, you know, the nine month deployment. There was a lot of foundational work that happened before that. Um, you know, uh, uh, Verizon's been involved in the Etsy NFV since its inception. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on virtualization, POCs, that kind of thing. Um, when, we, when we reference back to that kind of nine month window, that was the, okay, we think we really, we need to go now. So we, we've done enough of that foundational work, we really just need to start executing now. So we started the kind of the, the final round of selection for the, uh, the technology. And one of the things that was really key to us was we wanted to stick to the, the white box, uh, you know, the commodity hardware model, both the server and, and the switching layer. So when we looked around the landscape, you know, we had a few choices in the, in the switching uh, capability and you know, did a, a bake off and, and Big Switch was, was there with just a spot on integration with, um, with OpenStack and, and really hit the, hit the mark where we wanted to be with that software hardware disaggregation and, and the functionality with OpenStack. So you know, as Kyle said, we, we engaged, we, you know, we did our initial kind of testing in the lab and then you know, away we went. So, um, you know, Dell's been a great partner from a hardware perspective in both switching and compute. Uh, Red, Red Hat's been a great partner at the, uh, the OpenStack layer. Um, you know, we were kind of running on the bleeding edge with them the whole time, pushing, we were pushing OSP7 really hard. You know, that's a, a year old now, but <laughs> um, pushing OSP7 really hard. We needed some functionality in that. They worked really well with us to turn that around, uh, working again with Big Switch and, and with, with Dell at the, you know, the fi at the BIOS and firmware levels and everything that we need to do there. So. Um, you know, and then just walked it up from there and, and pushed it to where we had a deployable model that we then rolled out domestically into our first five data centers. Yeah, so, so one of the, 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 uh, the shifts that we're seeing there is, you know, what does you know, the customer do themselves versus you know, what can I just get in the software and the platforms and everything we do. You say, you know, I want you know, kind of white box on, on, on the server and on, on the networking. Can you talk a little bit about the skill set and the team that you have, what familiarity they have, um, that you were kind of willing to do that, maybe give us a little bit of color as to how that went, because I've talked to some people that were like, oh, well this is trivial, I just you know, take out what I had forever and I throw in new stuff and oh wait, I don't know what I'm doing and I you know, shot myself in the foot. So uh, what <laughs> right. was your experience like? And, uh, right. you know, so we drew experience from around our business, you know, with server experts and uh, networking experts and you know, put them on a, you know, a concentrated team to get started on this. Um, one of the decisions we made on this initial deployment was we didn't go full white box um, for some of the concerns you just listed, that you have to build an organization to support a true uh, you know, white box deployment. So what we did is we chose a, you know, the Dell servers that give us white box-like pricing and, and performance, but we also still have the backstop of, of support through Dell there, so it allows us to build that white box support internally while we still have the uh, kind of more traditional method there to use as long as we need it. Um, similarly, with the OpenStack side, we partnered with Red Hat to get a supported release of OpenStack instead of trying to do it all ourselves, because as everyone knows, that takes a huge commitment in developers and internal capability that, quite frankly, is, is still being built up around the world, so there's, you know. So, one follow-up question for you. Some concerns we hear out there is scale, in performance, mm -hmm. uh, can you talk? You know, so on the network. I'm sorry, on the storage side. My understanding is you're using with the Red Hat OpenStack. You're using Ceph, and then of course you've got Big Switch. Can, can you speak to kind of your experiences, kind of meet expectations, any kind of you know adjustments you need to do do along the way? Yeah, I, I mean, as with any project where you're moving as fast as we are, there's adjustments along the way. So we've been pleased with our initial selections. Um, you know, as Kyle mentioned earlier, as you really push the envelope with some of the NFV applications. Um, you know, some of the, you know, Ceph's not going to satisfy all of our needs. It, it, we chose it because it's a, very, it's a very good solution for a broad swath down the middle of our needs for storage. There's going to be edge cases where we're going to have to do other things to address some, some extreme workloads. Um, but for now, it, we're, we're pretty pleased with, with the performance we've gotten so far from, the, uh, from what we've selected. Right. And Kyle, you know, how much is Verizon kind of typical? How much are they kind of bleeding edge is what they're doing? What, what, what are you seeing across, across this use case uh, in general? Well, look, these guys are absolutely industry leaders. Right? And I think the, uh, look, they're the first to real production at this scale. Uh, you know, for us, it's, uh, as a company, especially as a startup, it's, it's absolutely critical for us to work with the, uh, just with the leaders in the industry, right? They're the ones who are going to consistently be six months, 12 months, 18 months ahead of the pack. They're the ones who are going to take best of breed technologies and form them and meld them to exactly what they need. Uh, we started 
you know, this kind of only work with the best type of strategy that we presented to our board. I remember five years ago when we were starting the company, said in every vertical and every geography we go into, we really want to be working with the, with the top engineering teams. Uh, and that's exactly what this was. You know, the top engineering teams push us very, very hard, as Chris knows well. And uh, in January, right, right before we started the engagement, we had identified six key areas that NFE requires that traditional L2, L3 can't deliver. Uh, because of this engagement, by last summer, we had uh, 25. <laughs> and by, I think by November, we had delivered like 23 of the 25 and got through the rest in January. So it was, it was just one of these very, very intense experiences. But this is what you sign up for when you work with the top engineering teams out there. Uh, and this is what we were looking for. So I think this, uh, no, this, is, this to me is what success looks like. So, Chris, one of the, the things that gets discussed a lot here at the OpenStack Summit, you know, not just this year, but you know, previous summits, is you know, technology. You know, yeah, yeah, there's hard things, but sometimes it's the easiest part. It's uh, you know, you know, one part's technology, you know, nine parts kind of the operations and people. Sure. What, what, what's your experience been, uh, you know, with the solution? Yeah, I would say you could you could slice and dice the percentages any way you want, but yeah, I would say the you know, the technology was challenging, the, the bleeding edge, you know. Fixing things, you know, it's a couple of times, you know, we had we were on late night calls and had a patch the next day from from the guys at Big Switch or whatever to fix some critical thing to keep us moving, uh, you know, towards our goals. But but to speak to the people part, it really has been uh, a challenge, uh, you know, a, a good challenge because we're changing fundamentally the way we run our telco networks. So it's it's a change at every level. It's a change at the kind of hardware we're running, the kind of software we're running, the kind of skill sets that are needed. Um, you know, so it's it's been a challenge that Verizon's met head on. We've you know we've done a lot of training, we've done a lot of uh, socialization. Uh, even so, it's still you know it's still when you're changing a big a big organization with a with a you know a, a pretty significant technology change like this, uh, it's it's challenging. But we're working through it. I mean, we've got a history of doing this. We've done it with yeah. you know analog to digital and 3G to 4G and just you know Volte and everything else we've done over the years. So this is just another step in the in the technology evolution for Verizon. But um, it's definitely been uh, been a neat ride. How far up the management track a chain was this project? What uh, was involved in this project? And uh, you know, anything you can speak to about what this will mean to your business going forward? Sure. So at the highest levels, uh, you know, our CTO was intimately involved in, in what we were doing here. Um, so it was sponsored from the highest levels. I mean, the only way we could really do a, a, you know, a change across ent the entire business. This isn't just like Verizon Wireless or Verizon Telecom. This was Verizon as a whole opting to change our infrastructure. So uh, you know, that was sponsored at the highest levels. Um, the challenge or the changes that we're that, that we're hoping to realize, or the benefits we're hoping to realize, are you know kind of the cliche you know cap, uh, capex and opex reductions. We really do think we're going to see capex reductions. Um, the opex reductions will come with kind of the um, the simplification of our network at the hardware level. The uh, you know the, the generic deployment of hardware, simplification of spares, uh, a lot just a lot of operational efficiencies we get from it. And then the thing probably we're most excited about is the making our entire network programmable will allow us to um, you know, launch things faster, quicker time to market, um, faster um, uh, reaction to demands on the network, like Super Bowl, the Pope visits the city, something like that where you need, you know, you need capacity instantaneously, things like that. It's, we're really excited about the, uh, the opportunities that brings us to our network. So, so Kyle, uh, th this solution was done, as, uh, as Chris mentioned, a partnership. Uh, can you just uh, give us uh, some of the learnings you had on that and how, uh, uh, you know, I, I think here at OpenStack, you know, the word collaboration is thrown around a lot, but uh, give us some insight into that. Sure. The, uh, there are a few. I mean, first, I think for NFV, the tie between the orchestration system and the network system, to get the performance that you need there, that has to be incredibly tight. To give you a sense, through, through most of the project, we were doing uh, weekly calls and then near releases, we were actually doing daily calls back and forth with the Red Hat team, right, to coordinate features back and forth. Uh, we're doing very, very regular calls with the Dell team to make sure that hardware underneath was ex was kind of exactly what the software was expecting. Uh, the uh, so the coordination there was critically important. I think there are a whole series of I think Verizon organizational things, as Chris mentioned, where these guys have a template for success. Uh, it takes a real specific org chart. That's something that we look for in the in the end users that we work with, and these guys showed the successful path there that works. 
So I think the vendor alignment's really important. I think that the end user organizational alignment is really important. Um, and then I think the really, really smart thing that in my mind that this engagement did, that we're starting to see now other folks who are six, 12 months behind Verizon sort of copy a bit, is the selection of which workloads are first, second, and third, in my mind, really drives success. You know, putting the IMS core as the first virtualized thing on, I mean, is a real dangerous path compared to taking other things that you can put on first, second, third, and start layering up the infrastructure. It's, it's, a, it's a recipe for success here. So, Chris, I want to give you the final word. Uh, in, in hindsight, you know, you, you guys broke a lot of glass. Uh, you chewed some glass along the yeah. way. Uh, you know, <laughs> with, with uh, the, the benefit of hindsight, you know, what would you tell your peers, or uh, you know, if you had to do it all again, uh, over again, what, what did you wish you knew at the beginning, or might have done a little different? Sure. I, I think you know, you, you got to have. You, you touched on it earlier. You know, in a large organization, you have to have that the sponsorship. You have to have the leadership, the vision to tackle something like this. I think you got to you got to pick. You got to pick partners that are aligned with the way you want to do things. You know, we selected our partners based on their technical capabilities, but also based on the cultures of the companies. We wanted to know that they were going to jump in this boat and row as hard as we were rowing in the same direction, and I think that was key. Um, and then just preparing yourself and your and the organization around you for the kind of change that's going to happen. Like no matter how much, no matter how prepared you think you are for the change, it's bigger than you think it's going to be. So, just making sure that the that you know prepare yourself and your people and your management. That I, I told my boss every day. I said, look, this thing's going to fail, and we're going to fix it quick. So just get used to that right now, because the you know the the no failures thing doesn't apply in, in this realm. We're, we're, we're going fast, we're, we're designing for failure, and we're going to fix those failures as quickly as we can. So just kind of, it's a reorientation for everybody, but it's, it's a lot of fun once you get it moving. Yeah, well, Chris and Kyle, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely, moving faster, uh, understanding you know, how failure fits in and, and, and into the whole environment is something that everybody's going through at this point. So we'll be back with lots more coverage here from OpenStack Summit 2016 in Austin, Texas. You're watching theCUBE. It's always